beautiful time of worship together, then I want to add my deepest appreciation for our shepherds, uh, for the way that uh, they serve now and will serve in the future, and especially to Dan and to Phil and to Don and their families. I want to say thank you for another gift they've given us, and that is raising up more generations of leaders in this church, and I want to say thank you for that. I want to ask you this question. What do you want? I mean, like for instance, would you like a pair of gloves? And you're like, no. Well, yeah, but what I need you to do is help me carry this big old batch of thorn bushes that I've cut down, and then you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I think I'd like a pair of gloves, right? Hey, would you like an umbrella? And you're like, no. Yeah, well, you finally got your COVID hair appointment, and you finally got in the chair, but while you were in the shop, it started pouring down rain outside. And you're like, well, I'm staying right inside here until it stops. And the person inside said, I'm going home. It, it, I'm going to close. And then you're like, oh, well, okay, but maybe I need an umbrella. You see, what happens is that our wants change with clarity. We started this series in James, Reboot, by looking at this jar. And inside this jar are these big rocks, these rocks that are essential to our relationship with God, relationship with each other, flourishing on this planet, helping to fulfill the mission of God for the world. But what we understand is, is if we don't put the big rocks in first, if we don't know what to want, we lack clarity. But clarity transforms our wants. James says, let me ask you this question. Would you like humility? (laughs) His listeners, when we read chapter 4, would be like, "Eh, I don't know. And James says, well, uh, let me tell you about it. God is at war with the proud. But he gives favor to the humble. You're like, okay, let me repeat that back to you to make sure I understood what you just said. God is at war with the proud? Yes. He gives favor to the humble? That would be correct. And you might say, go on. Because, see, that's what happens to our wants when we get clarity. When we open up chapter 4, James has already called us in chapter 1 to reboot an attitude of faith, chapter 2, actions of faith, chapter 3, humility and faith, or excuse me, wisdom and faith, and in chapter 4, he's going to say, you got to reboot humility and faith. And notice how he says this. What causes the fights and the quarrels among you? Which, he's just calling them out. There's, There's fights and quarrels. Why don't we investigate? He said, well, I'm going to tell you what causes it. They come from your desires that battle within you. You desire, but you don't have. So you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and you fight. He said, listen, that kind of living coming out on the side of pride and not trusting in humility, he said, that puts you in enmity with God. It makes you a friend of the world and an enemy of God. And he said, I'm going to get down to it. The reason you're responding to each other this way is because you've judged each other as not important enough to see the vision and the image of God in each other. So... What do you want? He says, these quarrels are useless to God, useless to the community, and useless to the kingdom of God because your desires are not aligned with the heart of God. You don't want the things that are best for the kingdom, though 
in there somewhere is kingdom desires in the mix. This is why he says they're double-minded, that their motives are impure, that they've got blood on their hands. He said the reason is is not because you have no kingdom desires at all. It's just that you don't trust them. You trust pride. You don't trust humility. So in the mix of the kingdom desires are your selfish desires that are not aligned with God. Mixed in with kingdom motivation is the desire that is poisoning the communion wine, just like in Corinth, where communion itself was making them sick. You remember Paul says the same thing James says. If you want to get well, you're going to have to ask yourself, what do you want? Finish this phrase for me. All I want is... There's a website where baristas from Starbucks can post the craziest order that they took that week. I love this one. Someone rolls up the Starbucks window and says, I want an iced ristretto 10-shot venti with breve, five pumps vanilla, seven pumps caramel, four splenda, and poured not shaken. I roll up and say, I'd like a black coffee. Finish this. Finish this phrase. I want. Well, coach, I want to start. I want to graduate. I want a promotion. I want to raise. I want to find someone special. I want my loved one to get well. I want to get the vaccine. I want to be right with God. You see, actually, none of those are wrong. But what happens is the way we want something gets in the way of how we go about getting it, and we lose the imagination of God, and we get locked in on the imagination of pride. And so now, it's not only what I want, but how I'm going to get it. And if anybody gets in my way, and that's what's causing the quarrels and the fights. You see, ultimately, when we trust in pride and not humility, we lose the imagination from above and we get stuck in the imagination of the earth. So we sell out for a counter vision for our own lives and the vision of God. This is what happened with Pharaoh and the people of of Israel when they were in Egypt. Pharaoh's like, hey, listen, let's negotiate. You don't need some big vision of fulfilling God's will for your life. Why don't you go out in the wilderness, spend a few days, come back in, remain slaves? But it wasn't just Pharaoh that had a small imagination for Israel. It was the leader of Israel themselves. Moses finally got them out there, and they're ready to throw in the towel before they ever got to the promised land. Oh, it wasn't just outside influence. It was the war of desires within them. Oh, they could have called out Pharaoh and said it was all their fault. But God exposes in the wilderness that they had the same heart Pharaoh had. When our desires are not aligned with the heart of God, we will trust pride and not trust humility. So again, what do you want? Well, I want to finish with an exercise. And I got this idea from uh, two 20th century British prophets, Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. Uh, In one of their songs, they wrote, you can't. Say it with me if you know it. Always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you might get what you need. So here's the exercise. I'm going to quote something that we want, and then I'm going to quote something that we want more. Both of them are right, but only one of them trusts humility. I want to be happy. There's nothing wrong with that. But what do you want more? I want others to be happy. I want to be heard. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But what do you want more? Well, I want to hear others well. I want to be understood. There's nothing wrong with that. But you'll only get to the better part of it. I want others to feel understood if you trust humility. I want to be seen. 
And isn't that a longing for all of us? But what do you want more? I want to see. I want to be loved well. So do I. But what do you want more? I want to love well. I want someone to make changes that show me they care about me. But I also want to make changes that show others that I care about them. I want the church to do things in such a way that aligns with me. That's what I want. I want the church to do things in ways that align with me. What do I want more? I want to do things in such a way with align with what other members in our church need from me. I want opportunities. I want to provide opportunities. You see, when we choose the first, there's nothing wrong with it until we negate the second. And that means we're not trusting in humility. Humility says, I don't just want people to feel tolerated. I want them to be celebrated. Humility says, I don't want the people around me to feel like a perpetual disappointment. I want them to feel like a person in whom the image of God is creatively and transformatively present. You see, what we're being called to is to trust humility and trust the vision of God so that rather than forging ahead in pride to make sure I get the first thing that I'm after, I forge ahead in humility. I am willing to perseveringly, honestly examine my heart and ask, are my wants leaning into pride? Self-sufficiency, getting what I'm after. Or are my wants leaning into humility, seeking not just the abundant life for myself, but to see the abundant life flowing in me and through me to bless the lives of others. What do you want?